Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Tuesday Night Live, the first of our Trade Week editions this year for 2018. And as usual, we have the full deck on board. We have Donkey Magoo. How are you going, Donk? Oh, jeez, it's been a long day. How are you going, Donk? Sorry. Oh, no, I didn't really care, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Maka, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Very good, Nikki. Nice to have you along again. Uh, on the couch with a rug and the heater on. Right, and Pete, of course. How are you going, Peter? Good, mate. How are we going? Very good. Let's uh, get this show on the road, shall we, and go into what's probably going to be the only bloody content of the night, which is the news. Much ado about nothing in terms of Crow's uh, trade news. Of course, uh, we're sitting and waiting on the Mitch McGovern trade. That's our big uh, card, certainly in the early uh, stages. I suspect that uh, there'll be some draft swapping later in the uh, in the piece, possibly even um, live trading on draft night. But um, for the moment, we all sit with bated breath uh, to see how the McGovern trade pans out. And um, yeah, interesting that... Um, uh, possibly impacting on our trade was Dylan Chiu uh, not nominating Carlton, which uh, leaves Carlton with perhaps a little bit more uh, collateral than they might ordinarily have had. But um, there has certainly been an amazing amount of uh, social media chatting and uh, toing and froing uh, about the um, the McGovern trade. And fair to say there's a whole lot of Crow supporters sitting there with bated breath and uh, ready to wet the bed at any given moment if that <laughs> trade doesn't go our way. So that... Uh, um, no, of course, on, there was... on that one, Pete, there, the, there's a rumour which is coming straight from Carlton who are uh, quite specific about it, saying that the there has been agreement on the uh, McGovern uh, trade and mm-hmm. and that uh, we will be receiving... Uh, they get McGovern, obviously, and uh, we receive picks 26, 28 McAdam and we give up our third draft pick next year and uh, and receive their fifth draft pick next year. Well, I'm sure they'll excite Crows fans no end. And yeah. if you've... Um, Macca, you may well have heard it here first. No, Macca, that's not from Carlton. That's from... You're implying that it's actually come from the, the club itself. That's no, 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 no. The Carlton... Uh, sorry, footy, big footy board. Yeah, but the, oh, no, well, but the big, oh. no, the big, yeah, the big footy board. They're also talking about pick thirteen from Sydney coming to us. Macky, you interrupted my news to tell me a big footy board rumor. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bit, it's a bit you're of lucky. News. There's no red cards on Tuesday Night Live, oh, Macky. Talk about an early cockwomble nomination. Oh, just yeah, but oh, there was a cockwomble. I'll just finish that the news that we did have earlier in the week was, um, uh, of course, Tyson Stengel from uh, Richmond came out and nominated the Crows as a destination. And uh, that will be a player that we'll be looking to trade in at some point. So that, um, uh, but that's probably about it for Adelaide. I think probably after that, open slather for everyone that wants to talk about uh, a thousand different uh, trade theories that are going on. Do you reckon Stengel's the best 22 at Adelaide? Oh, probably not. Uh, but I think that he he probably he possibly could be. He's still only, I mean, he'd, he'd only be what 20, 21 at most. Um, yeah. He's had two years in the Richmond system, drafted as a rookie from the under 18. So, you know, he's um, probably developed in a, in terms of uh, being a small forward, he's probably been developing a pretty good system. Um, and I expect that I, I wouldn't have thought that he'd be a best 22 player straight off the bat, but he may well be in time. Yeah, and you know, Lockie Murphy wasn't wasn't really rated that highly until we saw his AFL X form and then and then when he got his debut. So there's no reason why uh, Stengel can't do the same. But mm. that's what you do in trades. You, you're you not always often bringing in a player immediately that's going to impact on your best 22, but is going to assist your list. No, nah, but there's a lot of clubs that actually do try and trade best 22 players in, Nikki. I'm not sure the Crows have tried it too much, but there are other clubs <laughs> that do it. There are some, yes, that is part of it. But the whole thing is it's your list overall. You'll certainly be closer to our best 22 than Richmond's purely because of the amount of players they have in his position. And we don't have, apart really from probably Betts and Murphy, um, players in that sort of exact position. One thing he's got going for him, he is quick. <clears throat> He's, he's got a lot of pace and 
that's something that we're not uh, over endowed with. Yeah, but is he? I mean, really, he's a what is he? A small forward? Very I mean, small. Yeah. yeah. Small forward. I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's in the Eddie Betts mould and the Lockie Murphy mould. Yeah. 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 But I also, saw, sorry, Mac, how you go? I was going to say I saw him play his first game for Richmond, and uh, he actually made a reasonable debut actually, and he, I think he kicked a goal off memory, and uh, he certainly is not frightened to tackle, and he's got plenty of pace. Uh, he's, he's got assets. Um, but, you know, you obviously have to, have to develop them to be consistently good at that level. So, uh, but, but I think he's got something to work with. I think realistically, um, as PJ Crow says in the chat, there's not going to be many that we'll be looking at because I think it's fairly clear and and Kane Corns dropped the, that amazing bit of um, insightful information this afternoon that we'll be, you know, really looking at trying to, you know, move up the draft. Now, not that any of us would have even suspected that with all those um, South Australian kids at the top top end, but no, that, that's what we'll be trying to do. We won't be spending draft picks on, you know, trying trying to get any players. Yeah, I, I I agree with you there, Pete. I think that um, <coughs> the Stengel is a bit of an opportunistic one, and I I dare say he's a he's a third rounder at best. Um, all our focus is on trying to get up into that you know top half a dozen, but it's looking less likely. I got to say, I I can't see a scenario um, at the moment that gets us into that top half a dozen. Um, Gold Coast have come out and said. Uh, that they're quite keen on the uh, on the two South Aussie boys, uh, which delays their Crows debut by a couple of years. Um, so you know we may have to settle on a not that it's a bad thing, but we may have to settle on a on a Rosie and or Hately. Well, the sad thing is that um, if Wingard were to get traded to the Bulldogs, they would actually get pick six, which would probably give them an opportunity. To- to get one of the three uh, South Australians, I don't think they get past the first three, Mac. To be honest with you, I really don't. I think Gold Coast have taken both. Well, Walsh's um, Carlton have already declared they'll be taking Walsh as the first pick. Yep. Um, uh, I think that it, Lucos, Lucosius will definitely go to Gold Coast, and then the, um, they may or may not take. Uh, Rankin, because apparently he's regarded as a little bit of a flight risk. Um, and uh, they're, they're also, they may take one of the two Kings, for example. Um, yeah, I'm I've, just thinking. They're not real keen on the Kings, I don't think. The, the way I'm thinking that if the two Kings are in the, in the top six, uh, along with Walsh, and then you've got three South Australians, that's six. And my worst fears would be realising if Port got, got hold of one of those three players. Um, but. Uh, and I think they, they're obviously going to go very early, those boys. I think you're quite right. I can't see how we can trade into that top six because uh, I certainly wouldn't be handing up that position if I had one of those. No. I mean, with McGovern giving us Carlton as his destination, I can actually see McGovern trade not happening. I think it's becoming less and less likely. I think it will definitely happen because of the fact that um, they didn't get uh, Devin Shield. Uh, and if if the only uh, bloke they got was a guy that's broken down <clears throat> from GWS, I would think that uh, Soss would be seen as having failed in his duty. So I think they will definitely make the McGovern uh, deal happen. Well, how does that happen, Maka? How does it happen? Are you happy with two got second round- as well? Are you happy with two second rounders and a and a SNFL player? If, if that two second rounders can. Oh, what Nicky was saying before was the rumours is saying that um, the two uh, second rounders go to Sydney who may well accept them for, uh, for academy purposes uh, and, and in return we get pick 13. And if you work out pick 13 plus McAdam and, and even taking into account the uh, what they're saying, that we lose our third next year and that in return get their fifth, I've done the points allocation. It worked out about pick eight, and I think so. On that basis, you say it's a reasonable trade. Yeah, it's a reasonable trade, but it doesn't get us into Lukosius or Rankin. I, th- I think also the problem with that trade now is the uh, compo that's gone to Westlake, uh, sorry, to West Coast from the Lycett trade. 
uh, free agency. Jesus, how am I going tonight? <laughs> I haven't even been drinking. Um, That's your the, problem. Um, the, the combo pick that goes to West Coast, um, to, together with their own uh, pick, would put them in the box seat to get that pick 13 from Sydney because they'll need that for Kelly. Yeah. Um, and so those those picks from West Coast, that would be a more attractive proposition to Sydney than what uh, the Carlton second rounds would be. Yeah. That's well, one problem I see with that. Well, yeah, that, that, that makes sense too, uh, Pete. Which is possibly why we're hearing things are being pushed and worked on today is <clears> that we're <throat> working on trying to get that pick 13 back fairly quickly before because Geelong are jumping up and down um, about Kelly. They don't want to release him. Um, they're, after some, they're after something very high. So the longer that drags out might possibly help us, but it may, but it also may not. It's, it's a real unknown this year because we've got that later pick trading, which goes on further. And then there's going to be live pick trading on the night. Yeah. I, to me, the only way we get into that that echelon is if we somehow package up. Like we could on trade. I don't know whether we're allowed to, but theoretically, if we grab that thirteen from Sydney, which I agree with you, Pete, I don't think it's likely. But if we were to end up with thirteen and packaged up eight and thirteen and gave it to St Kilda for for five or whatever the hell they've got, that's about the only way we can do it. I think. Um, and with Wingard on the on the nose at Port. And he, you would imagine that he might, might get um, a, a single figure pick from somebody. Um, it does put them in the box seat for at least one of those two lads yeah. early. Well, that, yeah, that, I, I don't even think it's going to be Rosie available. I think that we, um, if we're lucky, we might get Hately and. Um, because I honestly think that after his performance in the SNFL finals, that Rose is going to be up in the top five. I think you're right. I think that uh, Hayley's oh, no, probably I the... I don't think so. You don't think so? Oh, well, no, I there's, there's a number of uh, Vic boys that are quite high yeah. up as well. You you think? Where do you think Rose will go, Nikki? Or I Fane, whoever? Um, I think he'll be closer to 10. Really? Because you, yeah, because we know that St Kilda are very keen on the King boys. So their pick... If you're going to try and push St Kilda back, you have to get them a pick that's still going to possibly get them one of the King boys. Well, um, and you, you could almost um, you could almost guarantee that Nick, I reckon, if you if you did a deal with the Saints, um, because what have they got at the moment? Have they got five or six? I think they've got five. Yeah, yeah. they got five. So eight and thirteen. You would expect that that gives them a reasonable shot. Um, at definitely one of the kings and and possibly both, considering that we're going to take a South Aussie, Port are going to like take a South Aussie most likely if he's available. Um, Western Bulldogs are probably going to spend their first round pick to get Wingard, um, and Brisbane Lions are probably going to spend their first round pick to get Lockie Neal. So St Kilda are the ones I think that that we would have to trade to get into. But in answer. Answering your question, Pete, I'm a bit with Nikki. I think Rosie goes about uh, 7 to 10, not because right. that's where he's ranked in the draft, but I think that's just m might be how the cards fall. Sure, sure. Because it's the needs, the needs of the clubs you've also got to take into account. And mm -hmm. I would back in Ogilvy because I, I think he's showing he's got very good links to figuring out what everybody else needs and he knows pretty much who's going to take who where because of what their needs etc are so i think there's possibly quite a bit of talking going on between him and justin reed regarding whatever picks we get back as and to they, what he can do with it Nick, they chat the, the clubs are chat too when they're on the draft order they do they, they all kind of have a fair i mean everybody knows the the top the first round is pretty much a given. Mm. Everybody knows who what everybody else is taking. Fiend, you're a list you're a list management expert. <clears throat> <laughs> certainly. <laughs> certainly in his in, own mind. Um, in, in a in a crowcast context. I'm better than Wallace. Uh, you're better than Wallace. <laughs> I'm talk, better than Wallace. 
talk me through the Gold Coast list um, from a from the point of view of there was some rumours floating around through the week um, about the potential of getting a hold of two and three for a whole trailer load of picks between um, you know our what potentially you know if you, if you look at next year's first our first this year Melbourne's first from last year plus a couple of seconds is is the do they have a need to build up that list and would it be more attractive for them to have a number of players uh, in the top 20 of the draft rather than just having two or three well uh, and, I, and I don't, and I seriously don't know the answer to it yeah, and that's a question without without notice. So thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, there's probably two facets to the to the Gold Coast issue. The first is what are the, what road are they going to take? Are they going to basically try to rebuild that list from the ground up, or are they trying? Are they going to try and feed in some more uh, ready made stuff in order to um, you know try and you know build on what is a not a, probably as bad a list as what their results um, describe. But the second point too is, Pete, is as Macca pointed out, it's the it's the point situation and what they want to do with their academy. And, and, you know, they may be in a situation where they're willing to trade around, you know, just to make sure that they've got enough points. But I think the AFL would, would smash Mark Evans around if he gave away two and three. I, I just can't see a, a scenario where they give away two and three because who like short of short of getting someone like a Dylan Shield or someone like that, what are they gonna what are they gonna get for that money? Who's who's actually in the market that's gonna garner that sort of a pick? I don't think Chad Wingard's a top five pick. In fact I think that anyone who pays in the top ten for for Chad Wingard is is paying overs. Who else is on the market at the moment, which would even be attractive to Gold Coast at that at that price? No, I, nobody. I, I don't know that it's. I don't know that it's. You know, I don't know that it's that out of the realms of possibility, and I don't know that um, it's that bad night move for Gold Coast. Really, um, there's no point in them getting top five ticks that just sort of wash out of the system tra- straight away. I mean, if I was Justin Reed, I'd be on the dog and bone straight away and saying, "Hey, mate, we can give you all this stuff. You're going to get you kids that." Them? You know, they're gonna they're gonna get later picks that aren't gonna disappear into the ether. They're gonna get they're gonna get kids that are gonna stick around, and they're gonna. They, what they really need to do is build a critical mass that doesn't move and leave. And the problem they've got at the moment is that every every uh, every kid that gets any good gets paid a million quid to go work somewhere else, and they and they jump on the plane and get out of there. What they need is what. You know, I was gonna say what they need is a lot of people sticking around. So if they can bring in you know, one or two trade periods, a group of five to 10 young fellas that are going to play together for a long period of time that aren't going to be lured away and, and, and taken apart like uh, uh, sharks sort of going at a, at a sardine pond. Um, they're going to have more chance of having long-term success. Yeah. And I yeah. think that... Sorry, guys. We have approached them. We have already approached them and they've already said no. I mean, that well, sounds really well before. in theory, Donk. But again, where's what's the currency? Well, the rumor thing that went round was the currency was, you know, an, um, our three firsts, which are not that high, um, and um, you know, a bun- basically a, a pick swap with a bundle load of, of picks for two and three. Now, what I and what a, and this was just a rumor that flew around. This is not something that I just sort of yeah had an idea about um and what I, I guess what i was trying to get at and whether you whether you in fact even knew is uh, is there list in a position where they actually need where they've got so many people that are out where they actually need a number of picks they actually need to take you know 10 or six seven picks to, at the draft rather than just two well does that the, make sense yeah who have they the, dropped the team, so far the they've lost lynch who else have they the, lost the team who actually needs picks is St Kilda. Yeah, and that's what I was getting because at before, they, Nick. Yeah, they only have six, and their next pick is pick 60. And they've right, got Hanabry okay. coming to them. So they've got to have a pick somewhere for Hanabry. So I think if you get them, um, and what do you think, what's Sydney going to want for Hanabry? Well, um, you, you would... He's only with a second rounder these days. No. Nah. Yeah, so... 
I, I oh. don't know about that. I don't know about that, Macca. Oh, uh, very ordinary year. Shocking year. Well, ordinary year, but a pretty That's decent one. career. Yeah. Oh, been ordinary two years. Been ordinary for two years now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, St Kilda seem to be the vulnerable one for me because they've got a lot of work to do on their list and they don't have a lot of picks. And I, I feel like St Kilda squandered an opportunity over the last couple of years where they did have some good picks, uh, high-end picks, and they just haven't used them well. But to finish off, I guess, the Gold Coast discussion, um, Pete, uh, they've, they've dropped, what, two? Off their list so far, I don't know what they've dropped off the back end in terms of rookies and, you know, low, um, you know, end of the squad kind of players. But for yep. me, I uh, the feeling that I get is that they're going to go for a, basically a full rebuild, um, and they're going to need picks for the points for their for their academy. Um, and I, I just don't. See, I know that Rankin and, and to a lesser degree Lacocious represent flight risk for them. But I just don't. I don't see them passing it up. I don't see them passing up two and three. I, I think that would fly in the face of what they're trying to do up there. Because I, I don't see them inject. They they haven't got a. There's not enough mature age, top quality players around, for it to be worth their while, mm. in my opinion. Now, er, everyone that's any good is already nominated somewhere else. So you think. Um... The Saints pick is probably the uh, the one that's a potential. What was that? What's that pick six? That's yeah, pick, pick six. six. You would mm. think that if if we gave eight, thirteen, and a player, we would be able to get six. I believe. Yeah. Um, I I would I would give eight and sixteen and keep thirteen if you could. Well, that's a possibility too because you would think thirteen or sixteen would be enough to get Hanbury done. Yeah. Um, and it makes up for them. Uh, like if they were to do a deal with West Coast for those two lower end picks, it keeps um, it keeps them in the first round of the draft. So to me, St Kilda's the one, and they have been relatively quiet. And DSG on the chat is saying uh, eight thirteen and a player is too much to get six. Oh, You've, definitely. Well, it is. It's a means to an end. Uh, Macca, it's a uh, again. Uh, people get hung up on numbers, but the fact is, you got to do what you need to do to get the outcome that you want. And eight and thirteen plus, say Cameron Ellis Yolman to St Kilda for Isaac Rankin, I'd do it every day of the week. Particularly if we've still got sixteen in the in the bank, or alternatively eight sixteen and Cam Ellis Yolman for Rankin and and keeping thirteen to maybe pick up. Hately or possibly I don't know Valenti or someone like that, or maybe a good Vic Country lad. I'd do it every day of the week. Now, the one thing is, are we getting uh, a little bit too hung up on just South Australian players? Um, and the reason I say that is, I saw an interview with Og Ogilvy, and I don't know whether other people saw it or not, but they asked Og Ogilvy. Uh, obviously, you got to have a, a lot of draft picks. Have you got plans for them? And he, and he said, "Well, look." He, he said, "We've got two lots of plans because one is or several lots of plans. One is if we trade some, and some is, uh, and then the, what's got plans if we don't trade them, um, any of those picks." And he said his preference was to have the full hand. He would rather have the full hand of draft picks. I think he thinks he could get do the most damage with that. That's his job. So of course he, he would want draft picks to play with the, the maximum that he would. That that that's a no brainer. That that's an that's a nothing answer he's giving really. Well, there. no, he didn't qualify that firstly by saying very much what we've been saying that uh, clubs in the first uh, five tend to never to trade those away. So working on that particular theory, except uh, except they have traded them away. Or perhaps rarely it might have been the word. Nicky. It doesn't really matter. They don't. It doesn't happen very often. Not in terms of like for other picks. That's what I'm getting at. I mean, uh, at the uh, end of the day, the other thing to consider, and I think, I think, um, I, I've said this a little bit, and I'll probably, you know, bore people to death. But I don't think Lacocious is is worth even chasing because I don't think he feels a need that we have in our squad at the moment. Our needs are speed and probably a little bit of defensive uh, cover. 
mm-hmm. um, and the rest of it is just best best available. So, in in terms of the the draft, you if you if you're going to spend big uh, points on on a player, you want them to be ready made, and you want them to be quick. Um, so you want Rankin if you could, but I think that's not a possibility. Yeah, or Rosie. Yeah, Rosie's no slouch either. Uh, Nicky in terms yeah. of pace yeah, he's, cer- he he's certainly and it was, fast enough and it's really interesting that Ogilvy was asked about Rosie and started talking him down mm. which made me think yeah I reckon he's the one we've got our <laughs> eye on I thought that too Nicky yeah because he's starting to go oh he's a midfielder and he hasn't played a midfield yeah, yeah. I mean let's, <laughs> let's face it if, he didn't play well if Rankin goes to the Suns he's, he's a better than 50% chance to want to come back after two the the big danger with Rankin is that Port wangle their way into that conversation and pick him up because if Port pick him up, he's likely to stay with Port for the majority mm. of his career. So Lacocious, we have like when you have a look at our list, we at our squad, we have enough cover in the forward lines in all facets. We don't. Uh, yeah. Lacocious is a fantastic player, and he's I, all indications are that he's going to be a champion. But in terms of where our squad sits, he's not a need. If he wasn't a South Australian, we wouldn't be talking about him. 100% right, yep. Yeah, just like we're not really talking about the King boys. Yeah, for the same reason, they're key posts, yep. so, and we don't need that. We need, we need good speed on the outside, and we need a little bit of cover down back, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't look as if we're going to be able to pick up any mature, classy outside mids in the trade period because they're just not around. Uh, the ones mm. that are around don't want to come here. They've already nominated their clubs. So to me, it seems like the the draft will be all about drafting some new speedy talent um, and also hopefully uh, next season promoting blokes like Jordan Gallucci at the expense of, say, a Richie Douglas to try and get a little bit more pace through that midfield. And maybe, you know, we've got Smith, Seedsman and Miller who can um, cameo through that area as well. The only other bloke that I'd be looking at maybe offloading is um, Rory Atkins, who might be someone that can sweeten a deal with someone like St Kilda. And the thing is, you just look at who we're possibly targeting with Single and also Mercado. They're both forward pockets. To me, that says we've already identified that we're pushing Gallucci more in the midfield. We need some of that speed back in that forward line where we've played him this year. We've given him that experience, the taste of AFL, and then that last game against Carlton, we threw him into the midfield. Are you talking Nikki, about- um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, Nikki, I'm glad you raised the name, uh, McAdam, that's a, a pretty important name that we haven't discussed tonight and I'd really, if you're happy to move to that topic, it's one that I'd really like to explore because I didn't see a lot of Sturt this year and everything that I've read is that he's um, uh, a little bit more than a, a permanent forward. He's a, a guy that can push up yep, um, wing. You know, to, the, to the wing. Um, but I, I don't know a lot about him other than I've read that he, you know, he's pretty quick. Um, and that uh, he's a, you know he's a pretty decent player. Has anybody seen him? And um, and, and what's everybody's thoughts on McCann? Because he is a player that um, seems almost certain to be uh, at our club next year. He's well, watched his highlights. Well, he watched his highlights. He's a very talented player and in the sense of um, um, he has got pace and he can kick both feet and he, he can take a very good overhead mark. And he's pretty clean on the ground, and he can, he's got a good kick. So he's, he's got plenty of as, uh, attributes. That apparently he hasn't taken the game particularly seriously until the uh, last 12 months or so. Um, so but he, this last year, uh, well, the one just gone, the season just gone, he apparently had a very good season. Um, I don't know, there'd be Sturt boys who could certainly comment a lot more about it than we could. Uh, but he apparently he... He's thrilled about the possibility of being uh, coached by Matna. Uh, so he obviously, in, and Adelaide seemed very, very keen to get him. So he obviously has got some ability. Uh, I'm all, Everything I'm telling you is secondhand because um, I didn't watch him all year and I'm only looking at his highlights. Um, but 
people who do who did watch him all year did say he had a very good year. Reports are that we've had a scout at every game he's played watching him, and Ogilvy's interviewed him. I think about two or three times. What's yeah. the thing that What's the thing that we're going to miss most about Mitch McGovern, in your opinion? His contested marking. Yep. Um, he, he he takes that freak mark at the right time when you really need it. In my opinion, it's X factor, and I actually exactly. think exactly. I actually think that's what McAdam brings to the table. He can take a grab, uh, he can take a contested grab, he can take a high grab, he can do mercurial things, and I think if you slotted him in the forward line or even played him higher, I think he offers uh, an element of what. McGo- of what we're going to lose with Gov, and let's face it, Gov hasn't been consistent. He's certainly made some clutch plays, and he and he gives you a taste of it. And you think, God, this kid could be anything. But I think we do give, uh, we do get a little bit of that back, and potentially all of it back, um, if we do pick up McAdam. So I think he's a he's a tasty sidebar in in the McGovern deal. I, I, I'm just not sure that two second rounders along with McAdam is enough. How tall is he, Fiend, you know? Uh, 180. I'll look it up, but I think he's sort of mid-180s. 181 is what he was listed at as the waffle. Nicky, yeah. is he a bit of a Ben Davis? Bit of a Ben Davis uh, sort of like? I reckon he possibly is, um, just by the sounds of it. I mean, there's we've had some reports on the Big Footy board of some people who have actually watched him, and they're they're a little bullish on him. But I think the 181 that makes him a little bit smaller. I don't think he's because Davis is one. How, no, how, I reckon he's got to be taller than that. Yeah, Davis yeah. is 187. Well, Paholke's 186, and I reckon he's taller than Miles Paholke. Yeah, I reckon you're right. I reckon they've got that wrong. Well, I mean What's that was McGovern a couple of years ago. McGovern yeah, it 190, was. 191, I reckon. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to find um, a bit more um, updated info. Look, I just think that our team is a bit one-dimensional and lacks a bit of flair. Uh, apart from Eddie Betts, I don't feel like we've got anyone who has that real flair about them. And I think McAdam is just someone that you could throw in and uh, he will be inclined to make something out of nothing at times. Uh, and that's that's... You know, assuming he ends up being up to the standard, because let's see, let's face it, we've only seen him at SNFL level, and there's plenty of SNFL players that can't make the grade, like a Mitch Grigg. So, I mean, you know, who knows? But based on exposed form, I, I think he, I think he gives the team a little bit of unpredictability that we need, to be honest. <coughs> well, PJ Crow says he he kicks goals, and uh, he certainly does. So. I, I, I'm with you on that one, Phoenix. That uh, um, we don't have anybody that, play, uh, it, and this weird that I'm assuming that he can translate his SNFL form into AFL form. Um, and if he can do that, he he has got that unpredictability about him um, that that is just that X factor around the goals, which is very very handy. So what do you, what do you think about the um, picks to go along with McGovern in that trade? Um, or McAdam, sorry, Pete. Uh, are you happy with the mid two mid twenties? Oh, look, definitely on on their face. Um, no, um, y- you would have hoped that they could have been combined and traded to a Sydney, but I, I think that that we've got some strife with that now. As I said before, with the, with how West Coast is placed and that, mm. what they need for Kelly, so I, I think that that's that's going to be difficult. Um, it, the trouble is, is that you know uh, the the difficulty is is you just don't know what <clears throat> the whole picture is um, and what deals you know what picks need to satisfy what deals and I think I made mention of this last week. It's difficult when all we look at is we say, well, what's the value of the you know what do we see as the value of the player? And we all know mm. that the value of the player, you know, is somewhere between probably you know anywhere between thirteen and. You know, I don't know, maybe ten because he's contracted, maybe ten or nine, yep. something like that. Yeah, somewhere around there. So we, as as onlookers, we just see, well, that's that's the value. But 
obviously what goes on behind closed doors is is that what do we need to get the next deal done? What what do we you know what do we need in our cart to mm. to move to the next you know to, to the next stop? And that's what we don't see. And I know that this sometimes gets a lot of derision, this type of attitude in on social media. But I really do believe when we're looking at particularly a, a year where what we wanted to do is bundle up picks and get ourselves up the draft board, we really are going to have to wait pretty much until draft night with the live trading um, to really find out, you know, d- did we get what we needed to get? Uh, we're, not, we're not actually going to know. Yeah. Um, and so for all we know, those two second rounders may well, they may well have, you know, currency for somebody else like a St Kilda or like, I, I don't know. Um, well, the- and until that all plays out, mm-hmm. we're just not going to know. Well, and the other wild card is the Giants because if if um, Rory Lobb gets to Fremantle, that gives the Giants pick six, and with their um, salary cap issues, um, you know they they may well be inclined to look at their academy or look at academy players, which means that really they're only interested in points, which means exactly. that maybe their pick, maybe that pick six um, might be accessible as well so you've got the you've got the giants you've got oh no sorry that would be pick five wouldn't it for uh, from Fremantle. anyway five or six so the giants might be someone might be a bit of a smoky because they're also going to get a pick for um shield as well yeah so i mean it'll it'll uh, the giants might be someone that would be willing to to look at something um and that's a really good point because that's a that's a classic example of you know like a team like either you know like Gold Coast, Sydney, um, GWS, where what they actually need is points, and the, the actual draft number isn't as important. Yeah. And so that could be something that we're looking at, and we're just not going to know that. And what we'll see, if that is how it goes down, that we just get those two second round picks, that's all we're going to see. And of course, there'll just be a massive meltdown. Um, uh, about that um, and um, it, you know we're just going to have to see how that plays out but no on its face Fiend, no you, you wouldn't let's just <clears throat> excuse me let's put it this way those two draft picks do not equal you know his value no not even with McCannum th- thrown in to the bar no definitely in my not. opinion no but um, maybe they have some kind of intrinsic value to somebody else yep. yeah yeah so I think there's a reasonable summary of it the, the problem we face of course is the fact that uh, of all the cl- clubs that had to be nominated, uh, he nominates Carlton. And when you look at what Carlton's got apart from pick one it's, uh, and, and those uh, second-round draft picks, it's nothing. And well, they have next year's first as well. Uh, y- yes, there is next year's first. But um, if we get next year's first, it's the same problem as the, uh, the second. You've got to do something with it and get somebody who will turn that into something for this year that you could use so i'm not sure whether you can trade future picks when you get them can you i uh, that i don't know i really who knows with the afl i don't know well they do break the rules of course because they allowed uh, geelong I, only uh, if you're geelong or hawthorne yeah uh but uh i think the result with that we're hearing that uh and if it's correct uh i think it's about as good as we're going to get out of them unfortunately, because I don't think they've got anything better to give us. Well, and I think that takes them out of the picture, to be honest with you. I, I really do. I don't I don't think a deal gets done for McAdam in two seconds, notwithstanding what we've just been discussing about means to an end and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, because I think there'll be other teams that will be interested that will put deals together that may entice McGovern to change his mind on his preferred destination. And one of those, I think, is Hawthorne. Well, if, if I'm Mitch going to McGovern, if, nobody, sorry, I don't, I don't think anybody's. I don't think anybody's interested in McGovern. Yeah, oh, I'm serious. No, I disagree. Yeah, I think there'll be others. Well, his his manager said uh, at the time when he chose uh, Carlton that there were three other teams: West Coast and Frio yep. in the West, and one Victorian team which he would name out of respect. That, what bullshit that is. And I don't think there is another Victorian team. That's oh, what I honestly think. But, that's, but no. that's when he still had two years to go on a contract, on a contract to us, 
So other teams were possibly interested but wouldn't have thought he was really on the market so much. And I wouldn't trust too much out of Colin Young's mouth. No, I was just about to say, uh, that player manages a snake, most of them are. I I think there might be a couple of other clubs sniffing around, and I think McGovern uh, has shown to be someone who's prone to change his mind. Uh, He could be swayed for a a decent uh, deal, and uh, if you have a look at who the possibilities might be, Hawthorne springs to mind. Jordan Ruff is not getting much younger. Um, they've got guns. And they might there. lose him. They've lost Cyril Rioli, so they've lost a bit of forward line X factor, although they're different types of players. I I think that McGovern would appeal to Hawthorne as a re- as a ready made uh, uh, quality young forward who who's versatile enough to play back as well. Um, and we know that they like to sweep in and and uh, and make the big eleventh hour deals. So I wouldn't write them off just yet. And they also lost out on, um, uh, they were Shield. one of those after Shield. Yep. So it means yep. we know they've got money. They've put money aside for Shield uh, quite a bit. So they've got something to play with there. And you're spot on, Phoenix. They've got a real problem in their back line. And I think they wouldn't sell it to him as that, but I think that's they would possibly earmark him to be a bit more of a swing man. Mm. More like his brother. And also, like, it's a really good strategy for the Crows just to sit on this and bake him. Like, let's bake McGovern and bake sauce. There's no, there's, yep. <laughs> there's no, there's absolutely no incentive for us to do this fast if we're not getting the things we need to. Um, and if, if there's no movement up forward. So, um, I'm, I'm still crossing my fingers with my, um, trademark donkey optimism that we're going to get picks two and three out of Gold Coast. But, but short of that. <laughs> But short of that being locked away, um, I'm I'd be quite happy to sit on McGovern until the end of the week because the longer he sits, uh, the more he stews, and he'll be straight up the apple and pears to his manager and saying, "You got to find me a way out of here." Um, and if he doesn't, then you know he's stuck in a place that he's he's burnt bridges at and 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 run it into the ground, and he's he's in a really bad spot. So and that's the key, Mac. Uh, that's the key, Donkey. That he has burnt bridges, hasn't he? Yeah, you don't like. I, I can handle lots of different things that happen, but when you come out and say, "I don't think the clubs are going in the right direction," that was the moment where I thought, "You know what, mate? You can take a long walk off a short pier." Yeah. Um, well, I I honestly... the, the other solution to that, sorry, Nikki, the, the quick, quickly, the other solution to that, Fee, is with those two second round picks. Is um, there's no obligation on us to obviously to accept them on the basis that we may or may not be able to turn those into 13. It really becomes a matter for Justin Reid to say to Carl, you need to turn those into pick 13. And you need to find a way to get in front of West Coast. Yeah. And so you go and use those two second-round picks and come back with yeah. some value from them. Sorry, Nikki. I was going to say, just for Donkey, I, I'm quite an optimist myself, but I think there's three chances of us getting two and three out of Gold Coast, and it's fat, Buckley's and none. There's a fourth one, but it's rude. Yeah, that's right. You, I remember you barling on a Crows mid-season when we won, when we beat Geelong or something like that. So, we'll, when did we'll, I do that? Uh, false dawn, the, donkey. Like, false dawn. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember. I'll, I'll, I'll go through the tapes. Mo- moving <laughs> along from the McGovern conversation, because we could probably sit here and talk permutations for hours, I, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Reid came out during the week and said that we weren't looking at the ruck position. How do people feel about that? You think he's telling the truth? No. I don't either. I, I think it was very – because he didn't say Zach Smith, he said Zach Clark. Exactly right. <laughs> I picked that up too, Nicky. Like, there's his plausible do not. No. Um, but he, didn't, but he actually not went go further go. than that, Nick. He, he, he said we have no – we think Sauce has gone along fine. Riley O'Brien had an injury last year, so, you know, he didn't get the opportunities, but we're happy, blah, 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 blah. It, there was absolutely no indication from Reed that we had a, a ruck in mind. And there's a couple of rucks sort of on the market. There's Jordan Ruffhead. There's uh, talk about Tom Hinckley, uh, going to, uh, Tom Hickey going to WA. Um, it's, it, it would surprise me if we didn't do something about the ruck position because wor- the ruck position worries me in our squad. Uh, yeah, I... But that- I think the thing is, though, that they're, they're, we're not the only club that needs a ruckman. There's uh, GWS need a ruckman. Um, West Coast is going to need an extra one now. 
and, and there are other clubs as well that are looking around for extra ruckmen. So I, I think Reed may well be learning to the art of just being uh, not quite telling the truth, like most of the managers uh, uh, or the guys in charge of trading do, so, so you don't give anything away. So uh, I, I think, honestly, he would be looking around to see if there is some, somebody that we can pick up. Uh, I think possibly you're spot on there. I, I think we're hedging our bets regarding just to see, because there's so many other suitors for Ruckman, just to see what we can get um, and and where we can actually fit that with other things we want to do and regarding the picks that we want to keep or which ones we're willing to let go. Um, but it's also very interesting that nothing has been said about Hunter. I think he may be a fallback in that he may get, picked up on the main list because he has to um, because he's been a rookie for, for too long if we have to. But there's we haven't officially delisted him. There's just been no talk about Hunter. So uh, well, Reed that's where him I'm that, thinking there's Reed mentioned something going him on. In, in, that, in that conversation in passing. And the other thing is we've, and we've also started to use Himmelberg and the Ruck. Yeah, but Himmelberg's got to break into the best 22 yet. Yeah, he does, but his role will actually be to do some relief ruck. So the fact that we've started to use him to do that towards the back end of the season in the SANFL, um, and he did actually not too bad. He he's still a bit slight, but I think there's, I think there might be a little something going on there. I reckon I, we've got some irons in the fire, but I'm not. But I don't think Reed's confident of it actually happening. Well, maybe the iron is the, in the fire is that they've been listening to a bloke called Phoenix on the Crowcast who said for the last month <laughs> or two that they should ditch Jacobs, put JJ in the ruck and bring on Himmelberg into centre-half forward. Then we don't need another ruck. I've, I've also, and I know that there was some talk about the fact that they couldn't, obviously they, they weren't able to play O'Brien because of his injury uh, in the second half of last year, but there was some talk that they, that they may well have played him. I just think there's a kid that they've put a lot of time and development into. At what point, taking the injury aside, but at some well, at some point, they've got to at least have a look at him and say, well, can he play AFL football? Peter, my... Nicky, you've seen a lot of Rob. Yeah, yeah, he he's a source clone. He, um, he's got the problem with his foot, his pigeon toed in, which causes some issue with his kicking. But I yeah. love the way he he really defends his midfielders and he turns into another midfielder as soon as the ball's been yeah, tapped. I think he's very – I think – I'd have to disagree. I think he's a very, very different – apart from the fact he's got red hair, I think he's very, very different. Um, uh, fi- source, physically. In the he's sense physically that, I mean, source, the same. Source has, source has magnificent foot skills. He's got some of the best – He does. You can say what you like about Source, but his foot skills are some of the best of any yeah, rugby going keep. around. Um, he's a beautiful field kick, um, whereas Ro- O'Brien's terrible. But what O'Brien gives you is, he, as you say, Dickie, he gives you that extra midfielder at the contest because he is immediately on the ground. He's, he's almost a Grundy in that way. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I reckon he's he got Didn't he, Dickie, didn't, you might know better than me, but didn't he have some quite high-ranking statistic in the SNFL for clearances? Oh, yeah, he was. And, like, his first season, he was holding his own and when he was an 18-year-old kid, he was holding his own against seasoned AFL Ruckman. And there's some good, I mean, SNFL, there's some good SNFL Ruckman out there. But in, term, in terms of clearances, I think that he, he he gives you almost that sort of Grundy thing where he's another, as you say, he's another midfielder at the contest, yeah. which Source doesn't, give, Source doesn't give you that at all. He's better at a contestor grab than Source is. Yeah, the only weakness, as we mentioned, though, is kicking is diabolical. And that's because of that foot issue he's got, and it's he worries about it. Well, and when he starts to kick. worry about it, he tenses up, and that kick goes shit. He hasn't been able to kick for his whole career. Uh, the big indicator for me with regards to O'Brien is that given that there are always clubs looking for Ruckman or backup Ruckman, why has his name never been mentioned in dispatches uh, with regards to interest from other clubs? Because you could, There you was could... last year. Oh. Really? When we when we locked him up. Was there really? I don't yeah, know. no, no, no. There was yeah, there was some talk from Melbourne. There was some feelers being put out about him, and we locked him up quickly. Mm. 
I mean, because the situation is very similar to the one that Source found himself in at Carlton before we picked him up. The the fact that um, Carlton uh, had him third in line, uh, you could say that you know Source represents two players on the list because Source is either fit or no one tells Source he can't play. So I would have thought there would be a club around, irrespective of the fact that O'Brien is contracted, he still wouldn't cost that much. Um, who wouldn't have inquired. And, and the fact that they haven't kind of speaks to me about what the competition feels about Riley O'Brien, and he's got enough exposed form, um, and nobody rates him. Well, it's true. Um, what about the uh, Darcy Fort from uh, Centrals? Uh, he's a very tall boy. About, he's about 24, 25, something like that. And he's 205 centimetres tall. Uh, has anybody seen? I've, I've, I've only read comments that, it, that the guy goes all right. Uh, is he a possibility? I don't know anything about him, Macker. Unfortunately, I've not seen him play. I, I just, um, I think the ruck position's evolving, and I think it might be evolving away from the um, from blokes who who can't offer something around the ground and breaking actually, up, Phoenix. I'm sorry. You're breaking, You're breaking up. You're breaking up. One moment, please. I think it might. How's that? Is that better? Much Beautiful. Better. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, I think the 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 ruck position is evolving, and I think teams are starting to realise that there's only twenty two spots on the ground, and do you really want to sacrifice it for a ten possession two mark bloke who just taps the ball half the time to the opposition or no one? Um, well, it, it was an interesting stat I saw it even after the grand final, Phoenix, which was uh, only two, two of the last or two of the highest hit-out winning ruckmen of the last ten grand finals or something, or uh, had uh, were the premiers of that year. So teams are uh, teams aren't necessarily winning the t- tap out isn't the advantage that it once was. I agree with that. Uh, that seems to be the way, and. Look at how Collingwood struggled with Grundy being a little bit held um, on grand final day. They really lacked his uh, his input in their midfield, um, and I think that was a that was a key tactic to keep Grundy out of the play, push him under the ball in marking contests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he didn't have a huge impact. And I think Collingwood, not notwithstanding the fact that they were in, in front for a lot of the time, I think they they struggled to assert themselves because Grundy was relatively ineffective. You know, look what happens when Max Gorn's not in the team for for Melbourne. Look at the the impact that some lesser um, ruckmen have, like uh, Reece Stanley uh, at Geelong at on to, at times, and Stephen Martin as well, because they're a little bit more mobile and can offer a little bit more than just a tap ruckman. I think uh, the the whole position is evolving, and and I think it's moving away from blokes like Source Jacobs and Riley O'Brien. To be honest with you. That's my view, anyway. If I could just interrupt, uh, just on the AFL site, uh, it's now official that the Swans help Blues seal the McGovern deal. And, no, uh, it's not official. That's what it says here. No, it says they understand. Well, if they're going to report official. it, it's, 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 said, report said, it's pretty close. It said Sydney has emerged as a circuit break in a deal to send Adelaide forward Mitch McGovern to Carlton with a trade set to be finalised with the AFL on Wednesday. Uh, and it uh, says that uh, it's, un- it's understood that they re- reached a breakthrough in talks over McGovern on Tuesday night with official paperwork set to be lodged imminently. The Blues will send picks 26 and 28 the Swans in exchange for pick 13. And Adelaide get uh, pick 13. And McAdam. And, and McAdam. Uh, that's a good result. That's a good yeah. result. You'd be happy yeah. with that. Yep, yeah. that's a good result. But they have hedged their bets there, Macca, with the understands. I'd say you wouldn't report it as in such AFL website so. wouldn't re- they wouldn't report that if that wasn't if that wasn't close. No. That'll happen tomorrow. That's a good result. If that goes through and um that just uh, takes away that little scare I had uh with West Coast, so that's good. Yep. Yeah, I think it's excellent, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, that's um 
that's one you take away as a win for both clubs. I think that's not a no one's being completely done over there, and no one's uh, no one's uh, coming out a massive winner. So uh, uh, all the little tin lids down at uh, at Earthy Head, you're not those deals down. Well done. Happy with that. So it comes back to um, <laughs> sorry, we interrupt the talking about rupture. No, that's good. That's a, and that, see, that's a good bit of news, Macca. and that comes from our <laughs> website, not from some bloody bullshit big footy reader. And, but and it wasn't. It was, <laughs> yeah, so PJ, you redeemed PJ yourself. PJ Crows had posted it in the chat. Mm. But it was uh, identical to what the Carlton, the Carlton bloke said, actually, believe it or not. So, um, anyhow, uh, move, what I was going to say is we, we, we were talking about the possibility of Atkins. What would you hope to get for Atkins, uh, Phoenix? Uh, I think you'd get <laughs> probably a mid second rounder. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It'd be a second. And the other, the other player that is possibly a tradable player, Riley Knight. Oh, wash your mouth out, Macca. Parky and, really loves Knighter. I, I couldn't see lock, Knight going. He's the only no, lockdown no. midfielder we've got, Mac. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. But I, I was just thinking if there was somebody that we were after that needed a, a good second round or something like that, the, these would be the type of players you'd, you'd move on. Yeah, I, or, I think, or, or maybe even Kelly. Well, Atkins and Kelly are probably the two. I don't know whether he'd quite get a second rounder for Kelly. I know that he's had like he had some good success over the last couple of seasons, um, staying in the best twenty-two in Adelaide. But I think the fact that he got moved out of that half back role was actually a negative for him in those last few games where we where we pushed him up a little bit higher, because I think it actually showed that. We didn't see him in that spot long term. And I reckon it might have just pushed down. I, I don't know. I, I think I, I'd put I'd put um, Jake Kelly in the same value range as Jared Lyons. And Jared Lyons got a mid-third rounder. Yeah, that's about right, Fiend, I reckon. I and think I think better. if anything right with happens too. with Kelly, it will be likely to Collingwood if his brother nominates Collingwood. I think I his think, brother is going to. I think his brother is going to know. Yeah, to but he has hasn't yet. I think if there was something like that, then he might ask. And if it is, it'll be something to do with um, Collingwood. Yeah, I, I, look. To be honest with you, I think Jake will do whatever he needs to do to stay on a list. Um, I think he's that kind of player, and I think Craig is pragmatic enough to understand that. I'm sure he'd love to yeah. go to Collingwood, but I think if there was a, an issue with him uh, and there's been reports that there is a defender at Adelaide that is uh, unsettled and unhappy with the outcome of his exit interview we've got Jake is contracted I think isn't he uh, yeah, it, certainly Cole Chaney's isn't... not contracted so I would imagine I think, that... the ch- I think it's Chaney yeah. I think we're there that that's about Chaney because we know there are issues regarding Chaney's contract and um, he obviously, I think, had some bonuses. Yeah, and we in his contract, and we, we cut dropped his him. Lunch. Yeah, before those bonuses could kick in. So I, I think it's Cheney there that what they're talking about. So they got the young part wrong. Yeah. Mm. The other thing with Kelly, of course, it had a dual fold effect, didn't it? The fact that we we moved him up onto the wing. Uh, perhaps to progress his game and also because it probably suited other players in other positions. But I also thought he went backwards once he went onto the wing. Well, I think it exposed him, Macca. That's kind of my point. I don't think it actually showed him in a good light because I don't think he yeah. handled the position at all well. No. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, the one thing that sticks out in my mind from that little experiment was the fact that he didn't have the ability just to move the ball on or go forward like he froze every time agreed. and the ball ball stagnated now drive stagnated every time he got it it was horrible yeah agree with that tom um there's a couple of like let's take a focus just quickly away from the the top few sa boys because there's a couple of boys that really stand out for me lower down I, i've been a fan of valenti for a while and i reckon he might even slip below the first round and the other one is the Bloody Woodcock, Roger Woodcock's kid. I reckon mm. he's. A, I reckon he's a bolter, and I would love to see us pick up, pick him up with a with a with a later round pick. Have you seen much of him, Peter? Uh, just what I saw on the TV. 
um, during the SNFL final series, and I did see a bit of him. And, um, oh, look, he looked every inch a, a terrific play, oh, but he hadn't you, even yeah. played a full season. But, gee, I tell you what, he he certainly knew where the goals were. He showed some uh, some terrific skill um, in terms of his execution, and um, he looked every inch the small forward. Um, I just wonder whether our commitment to Stengel <clears throat> may um, – may mean that uh, we don't need uh, another one of his type on the list. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. But if they're going to load up, then he's certainly he's certainly worth a later round pick I, for sure. I can, You know what? I can see him on the wing, Pete. I could see... I know he's not overly tall, but I could see him on a wing. He's got something about him, and he's got a beautiful kick, and he's tenacious, and I, I don't know. I Put it this way, a bloke like that would give me far more confidence on a wing than, than a bloke like... Rory Atkins, who really gives you one-way traffic. Well, he certainly didn't do his, his uh, chances of being uh, drafted relatively, uh, not in the first round necessarily, but uh, in the first couple of rounds, he gave himself a very good chance of being drafted with his performance in the grand final. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, great you know, they had a, it was a Cinderella run, and, and um, it was in no small part due to um, the performances of those two young lads. Um, across those four games in uh, Woodcock and and Rosie, and Rosie uh, both yeah. of them uh, were, were were terrific. When you, Rosie was outstanding. He was absolutely their first their first season, um, and, uh, and you know because eight you know kids and they're playing in this NFL final series and just really contributing strongly. Yeah. So I guess there's lots of permutations and, it, you know, one of the dominoes has fallen for us. I, I don't know whether we'll actually do much more um, apart from... I, I, I reckon Hamish will... Now that this McGovern thing th- seems to have uh, done, what does that leave us with? We've got 8, 13 and 16? 16 and 21. 8, 13, 16, 21. Correct, yeah. Uh, you can see some live trading going on with that, can't you? Yeah. Well, I think that was what I was referring to earlier, yeah. mate. That yeah. is that. I think that that's pretty much it now. And unless unless some, you know, big, some you know, huge deal comes our way in terms of trading, you know, getting those picks in order before, I think yeah, you're right. It's it's take those picks to live trading and see what uh, what happens. Yeah, agree. Agree. Not a good outcome. Good outcome. I, I'm actually surprised that we got Sydney's pick. I, I thought that was headed west. Yeah, well, so did I. I think that's, that's a good result. Yeah, I think. I, I think the Shield decision today really helped us because it put pressure on Sauce. He had to have a win. Yeah. Because everybody's been talking about McGovern as a done deal. It's a yeah, done but deal. Sydney, Sydney had to come to the party. They're the ones that I'm surprised about. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm which sure means Sauce has had to give up something he wasn't willing to. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Anyway. Uh, uh, who do you reckon's the winner so far? There hasn't been a huge amount of deals go on so far, but who, who do you reckon's who do you reckon has uh, enhanced their premiership chances so far because of uh, because of a trade so far? I think Essendon oh, with Shield. Oh, Essendon and Adley and Adley Essendon. Shield is a very very good football, very good football. Donkey, what do you reckon? And look. Um, I don't know about Premiership. That's probably too far away for him. But um, uh, I think, I think at least by the end of this period, I think Brisbane, um, with a couple of their uh, RFA pickups and a few little sneaky things they've done, are going to improve pretty pretty dramatically. As long as yeah, they get call. Neil, good I call, reckon. Donkey. They've got to get Neil yet, and Frio don't want to let him go just yet. No, but it's Marcus Adams, and I think there was Neil, and I think there's another guy as well, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, but the Essendon, the one thing that they've really lacked in in the midfield is somebody uh, who gets in uh, in and under and gets the ball. Um, they've, they've, for example, they've got uh, some really good uh, players on the outside, um, but not. But Shield actually has got the ability to play both. He, but he but he can earn a very good hard ball. So uh, he's just going to he's going to add a lot to their side. I think that they, I think well. Um, they they dropped out of the eight this year, even though I thought they had probably had a better side. But uh, I think they'll be definitely be back in the eight again next year. Yeah, I think I think the 
they're going to miss Goddard a bit next year. And I know that um, he was get, getting a bit cooked towards the end, but he still was actually racking up a fair, fair bit of influence throughout the team. And I reckon they're going to miss him just around the ground and around the club. So I I don't know whether they've um, how much extra they've added with Shield. That's all. I think I think I think Devin Smith last year was a bigger in for them than Dylan Shield is this year. Goddard was pretty polarizing at that club, though. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, not a lot of love for him from a fair portion of that club and playing group. Um, and the fact that he didn't turn up, he wasn't there for their best and fairest, yeah, which is rude. I think says a lot. Yeah. Oh, he sent a. I saw a tweet he sent though. It was it. it um, he had some other commitment, um, and he sent a very nice message. I don't think it was he. Any... D- he did, but I think there was possibly some planning involved with him not being involved as well. Stage manager, you think, Nikki? There was definitely some stage managing going on. Yeah. That's, yeah, he that's, me. The, way, that's a, the way I looked at it. Well, he's a player I would not like to play with because um, you see him uh, out on the oval. He, I mean, he makes errors himself. And then whenever his teammates make, make errors, he, you can see him uh, abusing them and yelling at them and telling them what they should be doing. And then... Uh, it doesn't even give it a rest when there's a break that he's at him and telling him what they should be doing again. I, I reckon the players would be absolutely glad to see the back of him. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, um, Maka. Pete, who do you reckon the winner is so far? Early days, I know. No, uh, I, I reckon um, I reckon Donkey made a really good point on um, Brisbane. I think that that they have, um, you know, at the very least. They've got Neil nominating them, which is no more or less than what Shields done at Essendon. Trade still has to go through, so they've had you know Lucky Neil, who's won the best and fairest at Frio. Um, that's a pretty big get um, to have them, you know, have a club like Brisbane, you know, a South Australian that's playing in Perth nominates Brisbane. You know, that is a big get. <laughs> yeah. um, and then in doing so, cleverly, they've got his best mate in Geelong, Lincoln McCarthy, they're best mates from the southeast. Um, so. Um, they get to, and then they get the the lad from Footscray. So, you know, that's three probably, you know, if not first 22 players, certainly Neil will be, um, and two, you know, potential. I think that's a pretty good haul. Um, for, I mean, and, and you've got to look at it in perspective too. It's Brisbane. So that tells you that they really are on the Then, you know, that somebody is selling a good plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good point. Yeah, haven't they righted the ship since David Noble went up there? Hate to yeah, say it, but David Noble had a lot of knockers in Adelaide, but uh, he's got a good track record at two clubs now. I wouldn't mind betting that he ends up in AFL House. Um, oh, yeah. he's, def- he's definitely... I think when we talked about it with that move up there, because it was an AFL push. Mm. It was, definitely. And I think the three of us, uh, we actually had a chat at the time and said this is his step there and then into AFL House. Yeah, I, I think so. And I've, and good luck to him. I think he's made the most of his career and I think he's done really well. My, he my just opinion, needs to stay away from list management. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, he had some hits and misses with list management, but let's face it, he was thrown, he's thrown to the walls with that. Oh, you know, he yeah. wasn't a bloody list manager, but the, we made him do it. And he did pull off a couple of good ones. Um, I, uh, PJ Crows in the chat makes a good point that you know Gaff staying at West Coast was probably a bit of a win, um, yeah, for West Coast. But and I, amusing, yeah, about very North amusing, Melbourne. very amusing. Poor old North, but I, I still think that um, Richmond getting Tom Lynch uh, is an absolute coup, um, and they're they're probably my front runners at the moment for for winning the the dra- or the trade period so far because. <sighs> I, I just think he gives them a, a marking target up forward and allows them to play Revolt a little bit higher where I think he's quite dangerous. And uh, I, I don't know how they're fitting all that into the cap, but good luck to him. Um, yeah, um, well, we know they can't fit him out of the cap because they've already had to shuffle out quite a number of their um, lower players. Yeah, they haven't got a lot of quality. They haven't, they haven't lost a lot of yeah. quality, though. Just well, they haven't, but we haven't really seen them tested with injuries. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. Think, That's a good point. Nicky. And I yeah, think if they do, I think they're going to be similar to what I see as Port and oh, Geelong. No. They don't have that good tier underneath because they've had to shuffle them out to get Lynch in. I mean, it's great for their future, but my other thing, I have an issue, I'm a little bit unsure about this is, 
can Hardwick change his game plan to suit that? Because it's going to have to be quite a different game plan. Well, it depends on whether Clarkson have. can give him some time. And like you know, we know that Clarko's on the on the payroll at Richmond as the strategy manager. So it depends <laughs> how much time Alistair's got on the off season, whether him and Hardwick can have a have a beer and come up with something new. Well but, apparently Hawthorne have thrown their um cap of the ring up at Wingard as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right strategy, wrong player earlier. <laughs> it wasn't Gov, it was Wingard. That that doesn't surprise me. But that helps us because their highest top pick is well after as. Yep, exactly. It takes him out. Well, I mean, don't forget, there's still Pollock. What do we think Port's going to get for Pollock? That hasn't been done yet. I think North oh, it's, it's 11, isn't it? The nine, yeah, nine. The, the, North, the North pick is after Port and after As. Is it? Okay. Oh, it's blown I out they had an, I thought they had another. Sorry, I, I nope. was wrong about that. I no, they finished they above us. I think, they're, I think they're around about pick, now pick 11 after the free agents. Yeah. Okay. They're directly after Port Adelaide. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a really key win. It was a really key win, I think, in about round 23 that just sort of made sure we stayed under North and Port, <laughs> which was looking like we were going to All right, well, we're probably, we're probably done all that to death. There's uh, been a bit going on and it sounds like things are ramping up um, and obviously uh, we'll be back again next Tuesday to talk about the rest of it. But in the meantime... Who wants to go first? Rock, paper, scissors. Nikki or Macca? Can Nikki go first? Because I've got to go and I have got a cock wumble. Yeah, yeah I have to. Right. There's, there's, there's a few cock wumbles. <laughs> Um, so to start off with, we can't have a cock wobble where it's either not uh, AFL or Port being involved with this. And Ken Hinckley starting the Hoff chant at their best and fairest. Oh, that was ridiculous. <laughs> cock wobble. <laughs> Incredibly <laughs> embarrassing. Incredibly embarrassing. The only one in the room going, Hoff, 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 Hoff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I couldn't quite bear to watch it because I don't like secondhand embarrassment. I really felt for the bloke, but Ken. No. Um, I think Blues fans uh, who were adamant they were going to get Shield, Settersfield, um, Settersfield and McGovern and they weren't going to give up pick one, they weren't going to give up this other stuff and we should be very pleased, you know, to give like one second round pick. That's all McGovern's worth, really, because we were big meanies to him. Um, I've quite enjoyed today and the fact that Blues fans on Big Footy are just losing their shit. So that's delightful. I think North Melbourne, once again, <laughs> missing out on a big fish. Just they're the cockwombles of the trade season. Poor bastards. They try. They try <laughs> really hard. But it just never <laughs> happens for them. So who have you got, um, Fiend? Oh, I'll go or Pete. Pete? Yeah, I'll jump in. So I want to, uh, on that theme, Nikki, it's all, there's either got to be someone from the a- AFL house or Port. I'm going to go for <laughs> ports list. I'm going to go for ports list management, and I'm going to go right back to when they had a perfectly good all Australian squad ruckman in Matt Loby, who'd come off of an all Australian <laughs> squad year, <laughs> and, and they and they thought that that wasn't good enough. And then Paddy Ryder came onto the market, and they thought, oh, we, we need we better go and grab Paddy Ryder. So that's okay because we'll need to play him up forward. So that's okay. We got Paddy Ryder up forward. We got Lobby, and of course they didn't. You know, seem to understand that Paddy Ryder was never a key forward. He was a ruckman. Yep. And so what did they end up getting stuck with? They had two ruckmen. And so what they had to do is they had to get rid of that all-Australian ruckman. Um, and so they traded Lobie and his contract out to Carlton. That then meant and that they then they had to pay him. They didn't they have to, to they, Exactly. Him. Yep. Then they didn't have the key forward that they got Paddy Ryder. So then they had to trade in Dixon. So they got Dixon in. And then <laughs> and then Ryder, Ryder's broken down. And then so what, what, what have they had to do now? They've had to get in another ruckman. <laughs> so they're right back to where they started. I love Port. I do. They just they they just keep on giving. So they're my uh, their list management is my cock wumble nomination. That's, a, that, a that's years in the making. That cock. That that's years in the making. It's years in the wumble. making. It's years well, that, in the making. Good, that's a very good one. What a cock wumble that is. I don't think it's over either for Port. 
I think that's that's we're going to be revisiting that next year with the next episode. <laughs> I, can't, I forgot what mine that, is. As DSG said, Port have no rucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautifully done. Well, if you can't remember, I also think that the Twitter trade accounts um, have just been spectacularly wrong so far this season. So that's amused me. They've had two days and they've just got almost everything wrong. Yeah, I but reckon. I do I... think, I reckon, Pete, I think you've nailed it because that is years in the making and it is just delightful to us. Port and their missing puzzle pieces. I don't know what puzzle they've got going yeah. on, oh, I but remember. they keep getting wrong pieces. I remember my cockwumble. It's the Geelong Football Club. Yep. A couple of years after pleading and begging and, and pulling the heartstrings oh, on yeah. Dangerfield, having to come home because it's his family and blah, blah, blah. Now they've got Tim Kelly and, and there's probably a side conversation about that, but now they've got Tim Kelly wanting to go home for family reasons. He's got young family, families in WA, and they decide to play hardball. Now, I understand the conversation about he's only been there a year, but is if that's not the height of hypocrisy from Geelong Football Club, I don't know what is. Mm. And Gary, Abla and Dangerfield had to come home. So yeah, they've got had two. to come home. Had to come home. And we, we haven't heard anything about Ablett's family issues since he's been back in Geelong either, have we? That kind of went really yeah. quiet. Gee, that's good nominations here. Yeah, anyway. I, I think any other week, you just that's quite a good one. You've got their Phoenix, but I think for years in the making. Oh, I'm happy with I'm happy with the port one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got to go to the port list manager. Nice work, Peter. Now, Thanks, Matthew, mate. you've got, on that on that, on that note, note you're I'll, off. I'll have to bail out. I'll, right. I'll catch you all guys next week. Okay, okay. see you on Twitter. See you. Pete. See ya. <laughs> now, Matthew, you got a bit of a heartache to follow now. Yep. Oh yes, I am a scrubby old man. That's what I am, and I really don't care who knows it. I don't vote politicians. Well, obviously, with the uh, no football on at the moment, it's all going to revolve around the trading situation. Firstly, I'd like to give a sweet to Reed. I think he's finally overcome his nerves and his apprehension, his fear of sauce, and I think he's done it. <laughs> He's played him very well, and I think he's, the result that he's brought out is a good result. So uh, a little bit of a sweet to read for uh, handling Sosu, I think, is one of the hardest people to to handle. On the other hand, smacks all round to the Carlton Football Club uh, and their supporters who, who seem to think they're entitled to everything. You know, Shul was going to go there, and McCoven goes there for absolutely Crook and Satney and... And Setterfield is just the stake knives at the end of it. But they didn't get Shill and they didn't get McGovern. Well, they got McGovern, but they had to pay a lot more than they thought they were going to pay. And they'll get the goat bloke with a bung leg from GWS and Setterfield. So uh, you're getting what you deserve. You're a hopeless football club and you'll always be near the bottom. Uh, <coughs> it's just a hopeless football club. Jesus. And and uh, also another big slap to Sam McClure. God, you are an idiot. You are an idiot. <laughs> You make a you make a public <laughs> fool of yourself all the time, nonstop. You're an embarrassment to the game. If you're calling yourself a reporter, you just make shit up. You do, and then also when you talk about the the way you've been talking about the McGovern trade, for example, oh well, you know, a second round or something. We know you're a Carlton supporter, mate. Well, I thought you were you're going to say something else then. <laughs> and I was, I was ready and, to hit the bloody kill switch. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, and uh, look, your bias is absolutely ridiculous. You, you're not a good-looking guy. You're ugly for a start, and you, and you, the stuff that comes out of your mouth is even uglier. So uh, you're an embarrassment to the game. Give it up, son. Just gone. We don't. Bang. Just gone. We just I, don't. I, what do you think about Burton? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, he no, just, he, he's just your standard old dickhead. That's yeah. All yeah. Thank you. We don't need Couldn't to be here for more. another hour. Couldn't agree I more. Just, just, can I, um, can I and, just, uh, sorry, I thought you were done, Macca. Uh, I, well, I am. That'll do. Oh. <laughs> that sorry, Macca, I, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. I was going to say, can I add um, Purple in there? I was, um, yes. I was listening to the, the, the trade oh, radio list assessment from um, Terry Walsh yes. this, this afternoon. 
And I was just, and I listened to Terry Wallace and he goes, look, there's some cohesion issues and we don't know how deep they are and we don't know where, you know, what that's going to do. But they've got a they've got a list in their prime and they should be contending right now. So there's no reason why they couldn't unless there's some problems with that cohesion. And Damien Barrett comes out and goes, oh, this is such a, you know, heavy knocks on Adelaide and all this sort of stuff at the end of the issue, in the end of the interview. I thought to myself, you you are so past the pale. It is not funny. You're an absolute moron. And uh, and I thought to myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend Macca put him up for a smack this week. Look, when oh, when, he, he when, when, the, one. He one. when, <laughs> when the out, out of the four of those stupid shock jocks on trade radio, it's saying something when Kane Corns is the one that's making most sense at the moment, and he is oh, out Del, of Del Santo. Yeah, no, no, but I mean out of the shock jockey types like yeah, McClure, um, Hutchinson, um, Barrett and um, Corns. Corns is the one that's actually making a half bit of sense. I actually enjoy listening to Cal Toomey. I reckon he's good value. Uh, Dal Santo is pretty good value. Um, but by and large, and I know they've got to fill time, but by and large they talk the biggest lo- load of shit on that bloody podcast and on that live stream that you've ever heard in your life. Um, embarrassing and if embarrassing. a player isn't Victorian or if a club isn't Victorian that they're talking about I heard uh, Matthew Lloyd do a um, uh, an assessment early on in the week uh, on Adelaide's list and I don't even reckon he knows he, I don't reckon he would even know who's on our list that it was just such a generic uh, broad brush analysis and then they get onto a, a, a stupid club like Carlton or someone like that and all of a sudden they're spending 15 minutes drilling down into every finer detail it's it's embarrassing like you say Macca and um, I, I live for the day that we actually get better content around this period like the the Yanks do um, because uh, there's a lot of intrigue around it and there's a fair bit of assessment and analysis that can be attached to it but the bloody bullshit official AFL trade channel is is the absolute pit, so I don't even listen to it now. Now, one little thing I could have said before... It's which, Port Media. ...which is really a, another slap of one of them. Why did they treat Port Adelaide almost as if they were a Victorian team and us as this a horrible outsider? For example, uh, a player comes from Adelaide, uh, Dangerfield, he wins a Brownlow, he wins a Best and Ferris, he's an All-Australian. Oh, he, you know, he should go home. Yeah, let him go home. He's, you know, he wants to go home, the family. Yeah, he, you know, first rounder should do that. And then they've got this bloody West, uh, not West, uh, Wingard from Port Adelaide. They, they talk about him being worth two first rounders, for God's sake. I actually think it's I a don't... carryover from the old days, Macker. I think that Adelaide Crows represent state of origin, South Australia. And I think there will Port Adelaide don't represent the same thing, and there's a grudging respect in Victoria for Port's history, rightly or wrongly. Um, but I think the Crows have and always will represent in the psyche of the Victorians, even if they can't actually uh, enunciate it. I think in the psyche of Victoria, the Adelaide Crows represent everything that they used to hate about the SA Victorian rivalry, and I think that's why. We get grudging respect when it's due and they're quick to turn like they did in 2018 when we're yep. just one degree off, off uh, being perfect. Yeah, and also I don't think they, they really see Port as a real threat to be a dominant club. That's true. <laughs> you know, they, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't pick on the toddlers. And I just no, think I think that. there's, no, there's an AFL directive to talk Port up. It is so obvious. Or not talk them Especially- down at least. Well, yeah, not talk them down, but to actually talk them up, there's definitely an AFL directive regarding that. And it, it really that it changed when there was the 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 mooted move to the oval and we were digging our heels in. And the AFL wanted that because it meant they got more money out of it, because yes, NFL took the bulk of the money that went to Footy Park. And also Port were losing money. They were it was embarrassing that they were having to bring tarps out. Yeah, yeah. So mummy, so mummy steps in, makes sure they get looked after, and and but and, and they the get part, talked nicely, and they get talked about nicely because they're they're not and you know because they can't really survive on their own. They they, you know, I know we get involved in the Port Adelaide sort of bashing, but 
They just want to see it. They're they're a boutique club. They're a boutique club. Boutique. They've they're, they're, well, they're like the North Melbourne of boutique. North, North, my ass, they're a bloody op shop. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. They're the North Melbourne. They're the North Melbourne of of South Australia. Like nobody actually wants to go there. They can't get more than twenty thousand people to a game. You know, for all their hoo ha and and thumping chests about how good they were when they were a suburban team, they basically delivered nothing on the AFL stage. You know, they sit there and go, the supporters go, "Oh, well, you've only won two flags. We've won one." I said, "Yeah, well, you know what? They're winning. They're pretty hard to win. And if they were so easy to catch up, then why haven't you done it yet?" And it's because they're a bunch of fake, tough, beard wearing, poorly tattooed. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, what about, about the men? Difference? What about the men? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I think we better wind it up. Uh, thanks everyone for listening on Facebook and uh, Spreaker. Don't forget you can catch us on all the podcast sites, iTunes. You can go to our website and listen to all our stuff on www.aflcrowcast.com. Thanks, guys, for joining us, Nikki. Thank you, Macca, Donkey, and thanks, Pete, if you're out there somewhere, and we'll see you next Tuesday night. Yeah, good night. night. See you next Tuesday, Phoenix.